Okay, so good evening, everybody. Welcome to our, I believe it's our first Mentorship Mondays for 2024. It's been a long time. Um, it's coming up to almost a year of us uh, doing this. So I'm, I am actually really happy that I'm the first host for this one. Um, with me, I'll be interviewing tonight the great Kevin Moulton. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> that pedestal, like the great Kevin Moulton, you know? Um, so if you're all joining, um, I've had the chance of chatting with Kevin over the last couple of weeks, and it's been amazing. Um, so I'm excited for him to kind of tell tell us about who Kevin is, um, his journey and everything. But before we hand over to Kevin tonight, I kind of just want to take a few minutes and talk about one, uh, the Minds Up Initiative, um, what we are um, as a group. Um, it is a nonprofit organization um, focused on empowering the next generation of professionals from the Caribbean and underrepresented communities. We're providing mentorship opportunities, career planning resources, and networking for students and young adults across a variety of career interests. So um, if you go on the website, please go on, you'll see a bunch of us. Um, uh, has, as Kevin mentioned earlier, Jamaica and Trinidad is where we're kind of uh, doing the rollout. Currently, um, uh, we spread across a diverse uh, field. You'll have engineering, you have the arts, um, just a little bit of everything. Um, so, you know, um, medicine as well. A few doctors there when I went on the website myself. Um, I looked at the new website, Khmer. It's very, very lovely. So I'm definitely proud of us for doing that one. So um, our mission is to highlight unique profession, uh, professionals in our communities and foster men mentor-mentee relationships to inspire and guide the next generation. We strive to develop an empowered and reformed Caribbean where youth can find their true passions and specialize um, in um, just a variety of fields. So, you know, um, tonight is, tonight's episode is sponsored by Schwarzman Scholars. Uh, just in case um, everybody's wondering what Schwarzman Scholars is, it is a one year fully funded, fully funded master's degree program based in Beijing, China that accepts students from all over the world every year. Applicants from Jamaica are fully eligible to apply. If you want to learn more, just visit schwarzmanscholars.org. I'm going to task um, Kamir with kind of putting that in our chat so you guys are all aware of um, that website for you to go and check that out. And you know, as usual, as part of our Mentor Mondays, we'll be picking um, someone from the live tonight uh, who will win a Chromebook from Minds of Jamaica. Sorry, I do have background noise. The little one has joined us tonight. We love um, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so usually done at the end of the night, a Chromebook. So uh, anybody, I'll ask a question at the end based on our discussion tonight with Kevin. Right answer get, gets you a Chromebook. Um, so really and truly, all you just have to do is um, be a student and located in Jamaica um at the end if your answer is correct based on the answer at uh, the question asked um i'll ask you to send a dm with your name and number and location and we'll um coordinate in getting that to you okay all right so without further ado i'm going to hand over to kevin tonight um so kevin uh go ahead and kind of tell us about yourself like who is kevin moulton mm. so kevin moulton is uh young man who was born in uh, East Kingston, Jamaica, went to Jamaica College and uh, migrated to the U US and uh, found myself from computer technology transitioning into engineering. So it's, uh, it's been a journey for real. So um, that's Kevin Moulton in a nutshell, a very inquisitive um, where technology is concerned um like to learn I, I i would say so so yeah kevin walton in a nutshell now working for thermo fisher scientific as a staff engineer um working on some very 
intricate instruments that scientists use. So in my day to day, I help scientists do their work and solve problems that are from a mechanical electronic standpoint. Okay. All right. Um, so you kind of touched on like that, that career switch in the middle of you, like, you spiel about who Kevin Moulton is. Um, what kind of, I guess, what made, what, what, what kind of made that happen? Made that happen. That, yeah. So when I, at the time I migrated, I uh, was in the educational system in Jamaica. I was, I was a computer administrator slash a uh, part-time teacher for um, for IT. So I service instruments all around the country, all around the island. Yes, a country. And so something happened, and I had to migrate to 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 the US, right? And uh, family matters. And so uh, after migrating here, I decided instead of uh, continuing in computers, I decided I'm gonna, you know, switch to engineering because at the time you had the, the, uh, the tech bubble, if you might, you know, computers was just coming into their own. This is, was early 2000, 99, 2000, uh, Y2K bug. If, if anybody's old yep. enough to remember that the whole scare, that wasn't really a scare, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared, but coming to America. I decided to pursue engineering because as a child, I like tinkering with things and making something out of nothing or, or, or toys. I think naturally, sometimes as Jamaican kids, we, we create our own toys, at least back in the day. But my, my family members used to bring watches from the US and within a day or two, um, they didn't work because I was trying to figure out how this thing worked. Um, needless to say, <laughs> my father and my mother didn't like it too much. So yeah, you know what happened there. So the switch was, was just because I wanted to diversify my experience and the love of, you know, just using my hands and being technical and troubleshooting things. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how we go from a working watch to you tinkering to figuring out how a working watch work. But you know what? Um, the, the, it, it worked for you. So you kind of need <laughs> just to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> hey. So um, I believe when I went on your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. just to see who Bolton is from my perspective, trying to figure out um, uh, you as a person from like your, I guess your career journey. Um, I think it mentioned that you did electrical engineering. Um, electronic. Electronic. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. But it sounds like that's not your day to day field. Um, that is true. So, um, so I didn't, after graduating uh, college with my engineering degree, I interviewed with a lot of these large companies, the Fujitsu, the Casio, and sometimes you're down to the last person and uh, they, you, you don't get the job because you don't have the experience. And so I remember there was a, a there was a, a job posting. I don't even notice if this place is still around anymore called Monster. And I, I looked at it and I was like, man, I don't think I'm qualified for this position, but you know what? I need a job. I'm going to apply nonetheless. And at the time, at the time, I'm proud to say I was fixing coffee machines after my, my degree because I needed a job. Interestingly, the places I used to go to fix these machines, these coffee machines, um, are a lot, lot of pharmaceutical companies who later on in life became some of my customers, right? <laughs> but I don't design circuits anymore. Um, I work well, not anymore. Uh, that was from college. But currently... I work for a biotech company who they make the instruments yeah. and what and what we do. So you think about PCR instruments, you think about gene um, sequencers, that sort of instrument. So we do insulation, repairs, but on another level, we do qualifications as well. We go into GMP labs, could be a forensic lab. Each of these labs have different requirements depending on where you're going and what you're working on. So 
my job currently is very multi-layered. Okay. And uh, if you ask any field service engineer in the biotech industry, it's uh, it offers a sense of autonomy, a mm -hmm. sense of freedom, but it's always a place to continuously learn because the technology is 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 there. You know, yeah, it's always coming out with something something interesting and uh, groundbreaking. Okay. All right. No, no, no. Um, I like that. Uh, so I guess another question that we can kind of look at, you're kind of describing your day, like a day mm -hmm. at, at, like in your job. Um, so part of that, I know you kind of talked about, uh, I believe how we advertise that a staff engineer, mm -hmm. right? So playing from like, they're, 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 it's they're a day. that layers, right? Um, so tell me more about the staff engineering role that you're kind of uh, looking at. So, uh, the staff engineer role that I'm currently in, it still involves some of the day to day, but more so on a mentoring, uh, level and building relationships with some of these, uh, companies that, uh, Thermo Fisher, uh, service, right. And uh, have a couple of engineers that report to me currently help to resolve some of their problems internally that they might have and also customer issues too so at a very high level i you know interact with with customers and have the the, the folks who um who report to me who i can assist also looking at uh quality issues working on some of those projects um associated with quality issues some reliability engineering so when a product comes to market and uh, a new product that is we well you know i'd help to give feedback to say the quality group in singapore about some of the changes that could be made based on what we see in the in the field okay all right i see it kind of sounds really busy like because you <laughs> have yeah, the project level kind of thing where you have to kind of do your work and then on top of your like we're gonna go with billable where you, you have to charge hours to get paid and your company get money and all of that yeah so my go ahead i'm no. sorry to interrupt you but but it's kind of the, the good thing is that i only go up maybe 30 percent of the time so there are weeks that i'm just in the office because the demand is so great um depending on what need to happen at that particular point believe it or not i do forecasting <laughs> in my role uh that's a whole nother level of of uh of, of things that that i do so that's why i'm saying it's it's a it's really multi-layered in in so many different ways there are, you know there are global teams that we work with of or that i mentioned earlier where quality is concerned uh so it's it's very broad oh. <laughs> right now yeah. I understand because trust me, that forecasting where you have to kind of see how, where you need to kind of charge and how your work go, and then you have to think about yeah. the supervise. So, it's a whole lot. So you're thinking instead of thinking here as just a regular, you're looking at the bigger picture yeah. of the of the district or the organization and some of the impacts that 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 will happen if you go this way or that way. <laughs> For sure, and so I think. Um, hearing like some of the many hats that you wear uh something that i want to figure out i think others want to know is like how do you kind of balance that you know they talk about work-life balance or career <laughs> okay <laughs> and what have you done to kind of like say i i, I think i managed to get that balance yeah. that we, we aspire to get to kind of thing so that's a great question that's a great question so what i do the calendars work and I, you have to put in time to even just unwind and make sure you make time for family as well. So I schedule my life, <laughs> right? Uh, as th so that is how I, I, I manage. And there are times when you have to make a hard stop and there are times when you have to actually work a little bit longer than, than, than you'd like to. But most of the time I make a hard stop, deal with my family, then maybe late in the night i come back and say i need to get this thing off but quality of life and and balancing um just life in general is very is paramount especially when you, we live a as busy lifestyle as i do 
Okay, no, understood. And so I think you're kind of alluding to boundaries, right? Setting the yeah. boundaries. Kind yeah. Of. You, you know what's interesting as you talk about um, time management? I think as you, as you grow in an organization and sometimes you don't realize it, it's that your time management skills become almost second nature. And when you look back, it's like, wow, how was I able to do all of these things, you know? Um, but you have to definitely be intentional in planning. So, so you kind of touched on it. You see, you're like rushing at his, almost like you have the questions like I want to ask. Because I was going to ask you, um, today you're doing the, the setting boundaries stuff. And I was going to ask, when did you kind of realize that you learned it? Like, I know when you started mm -hmm. out, you probably never have a clue about like setting that time thingy. And it's just, I think I, in, in, at the start of our careers, we kind of want to go, 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 because we're trying to impress not just ourselves, but our supervisors and kind of that and trying to get to that next level. So at what point did you realize that at some point that go, go, go is too much and we'll kind of have to kind of step back mm. and kind of it and realize those boundaries and how to kind of do it? <laughs> Well, a lot about it all when, when did I realize that this, I think maybe six years ago when I was having a car, I'm a very hands-on dad. If anybody is here that knows me, I'm very hands-on with my, my kids. And so one of my sons said to me that, dad, you're always on the computer. What? Do spend. So that was like, man, I need to, I need to draw that that line and 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 a hard line and um my my wife whipped me into shape you know so it's time to <laughs> this is this is you know full stop so yeah and i listen most of the time <laughs> okay no understood so it's interesting that um you're saying six years ago is kind of mm. when you kind of realize that balance and you, you scared me because i'm only like 11 years into my um career where i'm trying to find that and you know looking in so uh it, it's something that is learned over time i yeah. guess yeah there, there's a it, it is learned over time but you have to make a decision either career health or family you know what what what, what is it and when six years ago or we 24 actually i would say maybe yeah 24, 20, 2021, 20, I had, a, I want to call it a sabbatical. I, I, where I'm at now, I resigned from Thermo Fisher, went to Philips Healthcare for 10 months because I was just on the go. And you, you learn a lot about yourself when you step back because you can get into this robotic, just go, go, go mentality. And those 10 months away from my current role, I, I wasn't in this role four years ago, but even as a regular senior engineer at the time, it was still really busy, but busy in a different way. And I think part of it too is uh, your time management skills. I, I, I was intentional in developing my time management skills when I was asked to come back to Thermo Fisher. I was happy because I was a little bit bored at the other job, even though it was exciting being in operating rooms, using lasers. But I realized that I like the high pace, high energy environment. Okay. Nope. Understood. Um, so it sounds like you're kind of experiencing burnout in some capacity of when was. you <laughs> but, right. Sorry. Was experiencing burnout. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody on the call, if, you, if you're all um, familiar with what burnout is. Um, personally, I, I've been there too, where it's just not like after a while, like something that you love becomes something that you're dreading, right? Like you yes. don't want to do more kind of thing because of all of that. And I'm, but if, if, if you really love what you're doing and all of that, like take your time. I know sometimes we think that it only happens at work or in careers but in reality the studying 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 all the time as students mm -hmm. we do we, we can get to that point right and sometimes we just don't know that that's what that is called burnout so i'm um, just in case you're on there and you're wondering after all the studying and you kind of feel like you just can't listen more or whatever it's just you know um but okay uh so 
another question that we want to ask um you kind of touched on when you started out and looking for i uh, started looking for jobs so you kind of had to pivot because of some stuff mm -hmm. and all of that um how have you dealt or pivoted from those disappointments kind of thing <sighs> so you know I, I i partially grew up with my grandmother and uh, you know, my grandmother used to say, when one door is closed, another is open. And I, I, I've realized, you know, early in my career that sometimes you, you, you are disappointed that you didn't get the, a position that you applied for. I use that as a stepping stone. What was I? What, what was it? Is it, what was it that was missing from from my profile that, that why I didn't get this role? Do I need to do some more professional studies um, here? So I, I took a more analytic approach to it. And, um, you know, instead of admiring the disappointment, I learn from it and move on. Um, there's a quote that goes, the greatest failure is not in failing, but failing to rise whenever you fall. So learn the lesson. Cry if you need to cry. Burst off yourself and keep moving, you know? Yeah, kind of bounce back. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, in in your dis in your disappointment, don't think of it as disappointment. Yes, just yeah, like an opportunity to grow. Yeah. As yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. No, um, solid advice there. Um. So right now we're like minds of Jamaica. We're mentors and all of that, and you know, um, trying to mm -hmm. give. Uh, so as mentors, I'm I'm guessing we've had you've had uh mentors yourself or oh, have absolutely stuff. Uh, so, what does mentorship mean to you? as you kind of get into this role of mentoring and all of that. Yeah. So um, mentoring means to me offering support to uh, someone who's less experienced than, than I am and uh, guiding them to a place that maybe they didn't know that they would have arrived at or opening their eyes to uh, the possibility of different things. Like, for example, letting them know that networking is important your personal brand is important as well and uh, showing them in different ways how they can broaden their network having their personal brand and um having an elevator pitch some of these the students that we have minds of jamaica some of those soft skills as you know as you traverse to corporate the corporate world uh is necessary so giving some of those uh Things, sharing the knowledge that I have. It could be as simple as sometimes uh, choosing a class, depending on what route one would like to take. So it's building that that, that, that partnership because they need to do some work as well. Um, you know, and uh, just this, this, this uh, communication and collaborative effort to develop um, themselves. Okay. Nope, nope. That's solid. Um, okay. What's a lesson that you've learned from a mentor or a mentee that you've kind of carried with you throughout the years? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, I, I mentioned I mentioned it previously, but I, I really want to own into it is uh, the personal brand aspect of it because sometimes we have to to rebrand ourselves as we we go through our life because you might be in an industry that uh some people see you in a different light but and you have to rebrand yourself so rebranding the soft skills that i didn't know i needed my mentor uh you know identify that you need to try and develop some of these skills but overall i would say uh looking at a problem as a gift and I remember one, one day um, he asked me what if I, I went to him with an issue and he said what if every problem was a gift and having that per perspective stayed with me and looking at the problem from a different way because sometimes we get into this zone of admiring the problem I like like that admiring the problem we get stuck on the problem not really trying to find the, the solution. solution exactly yep um a question that i think 
so based on that um the and or your day to day where problems arise and all of that um talk to us about how you have like you try not to be stuck on the problem but trying to find a solution mm-hmm. a time when that you kind of have to use these got soft skills that you even talk about with us to kind of have it. uh uh well there 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 are so many of them um i can think of right now i i'll, I'll just say this what what, what there's a particular pharmaceutical company that spent a whole lot of money with us and uh, millions and uh, so things just wasn't going right and uh, we sat down as a team and i i was i was tasked with solving the problem and uh, so pretty much just dissecting everything and say here's what my delivery is this is what we can do right now while we're doing this let's work on solving this other issue and bring all the 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 partners in and um just bringing in don't think that you can do it alone even though i was tasked with that with that uh with that with that project i had to bring in other folks to help solve the problem and i think my keeping a cool head in 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 those situations helped a, a lot uh so i would say that that de- developing that soft skill that level head instead of being um a, a little bit just impulsive and you know the, the fire drill doesn't help anyone because it's uh, maybe a bad example but it's like your kids right your kids feed off your energy so if there's a problem and you get really you know erratic and like oh my god you know the house is but the roof is burning down you know it's not going to solve putting out the fire so let's focus on the fire extinguisher or call the fire truck <laughs> fair enough. so i um, either we try to see if we yeah. can solve it or hey i need help yes come and look at it so we can do don't that. be afraid to ask for help don't be afraid to ask for help okay um were you at at any given time afraid to ask for help at all <laughs> what i was cool all or, right or, of course of course of course because you don't want to ask for help uh, in in you know in the corporate setting this guy don't know what he's doing um but what 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 I, what i after doing what i what what the fundamentals and if you do the fundamentals and you build nice like i'm really stuck i'm not sure what to do ask for help I, I, in many cases it's best you ask for help than don't get me wrong try to figure it out but it's best you ask for help than create a bigger problem that than uh than <laughs> than the one you have currently <laughs> you know so there were there have been times but i had to learn that asking for help doesn't mean that you don't know what you're doing uh so yeah i was afraid okay now i guess it all right so i'm going to pause my question um it seems like abio has a question there um we kind of been talking a little bit about soft well a little uh, about soft skills okay and uh she wants to know what kind of soft skills do you think would be useful in the biomedical field I would say say um I don't know if pro- pr- problem solving or troubleshooting would be considered a soft skill but uh in the specifically by field service engineering I would say just being personable and just so she asked specifically about soft skills so I'd say definitely troubleshooting and problem solving um skills um <laughs> negotiating even when you're trying to 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 negotiation in any field i think is a is a good thing but uh yeah i would say those two that those are the two that comes to mind um at the top of my head right now okay i know um, touching on being personable um something that i'm personally learning as i kind of grow as well is that um this networking thing that we talk about and we're 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 selling to everybody that hey in order to kind of like in in your career field 
also getting to know everybody what's what as well as progressing as as you get older is that you need to network and something else i learned is that you cannot turn off networking even if you're just at like at the grocery store oh i think camera is asking are you interfacing between technical people and clinicians and having to speak both languages great question kamar uh, and both so not the necessarily clinicians too but researchers um mostly and <laughs> it's interesting you ask that question because a lot of the scientists that i interact with are also pretty technical um to a certain extent so both it's a wide cross-section sometimes you're interacting with the ceo of a small biotech company all the way down to the person you meet at the front desk and being able to articulate a problem or articulate a solution so communication is one of the soft skills that that um that would be very useful in 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 in, the, in this field okay um there's a question that i kind of wanted to touch on mm -hmm. um that's in my notes because it kind of we kind of went on the fly about it no um, problem we talked about rebranding and networking and a personal brand then uh very much on the soft skills oh sorry what was that Fabio? you're mentioning networking like i'm trying to like multitask yes. here so if the question is networking as in neck like really networking yes because sometimes even in the interaction with these customers are who you know these scientists people move around and you might find yourself in a situation where you need to um get to somebody else in a in and you say hey do you know this person especially for example there is a particular uh kind of uh what should i call it a, a, there's a procedure called flow cytometry right um just to put it briefly, that 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 that, uh, that group of those group of people, they're very tight knit, and so if you if you are you have a bad relationship with somebody over here, you might not be able to get through to another person here, depending on the situation. So networking is important and forming good relationships. Okay, you know relationships. Uh, uh, Kyle is asking, how do you manage mm -hmm. to communicate between them? Uh, not just communicate, but how to switch, I guess, in cold oh, okay. switch between tech and um, the other side, right? The tech. Um... So I, I'd say knowing, know, know your audience and meet them where they are. So the technical folks might exist in the same space that the, that the, uh, that the lead scientist is or um, because when I say technical person, this might be the bio, biomedical engineering department guy that have an idea about what the instrument does, but don't know the technicalities. So meeting him or her, that person where they are and translating what the issue is and bringing, bringing them, bringing them together, I would say is, is, is one of the things that uh, it has worked for me in the past, meeting people where they are and understanding what they understand and putting it all together so that we can have a successful outcome. Okay. Um, we're going through it. So, um, look, looking at yourself today, as you are, and as you've progressed and grown in your career, um, if you were to tell your younger self something or kind of look back at that um do you think the switch you kind of made and where you're at today not um like what would you tell your younger self when you were making that decision to do that switch um so i'll put it this way i would have to i'm gonna i'm gonna answer the question but it's almost like you have a parachute right you jump out of the plane if you pull uh -huh. the parachute too late, you know, <laughs> that's it for you. So trying to, I would say, don't be afraid. Don't be 
afraid uh, um, to try new things. Don't don't be in that in the comfort zone because coming out of the comfort zone is where the magic will happen. And if I maybe uh, you know took that approach earlier in life, who knows? Maybe I'll have a PhD or two like like Kamar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And then I get but, that, yeah, that almost like a stretch assignment where you don't grow unless you come out of that comfort. Out, out yes. of that zone is where you kind of you make all the mistakes and everything. And you don't we don't call them mistakes, right? It's usually lessons learned. Um, and from my day to day, that's kind of what we use to kind of build that new proposal to win that next project. Is that it's been done before. The problem is that was it done correctly before and no one way is correct but there's always going to be mistakes made and that's kind of where outside zone is where you kind of yeah. learn that and that's how you kind of tweak it and and that's how we kind of i think you said um never look at it as disappointment or anything but that that's where you kind of we kind of look back and say okay something went wrong there or you, you sat down and you kind of um let's go with reflect and those disappointments like okay not really a disappointment but what could have done better what could have done what could have been better all of that and that's why you kind of use that to the next step kind of thing in terms of the, these lessons that we're kind of alluding to in general about lessons learned overall yeah yeah absolutely okay all right um so i'm kind of going through again um What's uh what's an advice you'd want to give our viewers? You sitting here, um, as you, you, you you're we're talking, having a discussion, and mm -hmm. the questions are rolling in. What's an advice that you'd give our viewers? I would say explore, explore different career paths, and uh, don't have a have an open mind to life itself because it might be just your 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 new career it could be you you might discover something that you know is gonna make you millions <laughs> right um for those in in the biotechnology field or working labs um sometimes it's a piece of plastic that you use to scrape a plate or something to seal a plate and millions of those are sold it's a simple piece of thing but somebody is selling it. So look at opportunities that, uh, you know, people, people who, who are great business people see a gap or a need or a problem that they're solving. And uh, once you find that problem that you're solving and there's a need, then, you know, you, you bingo for another, for lack of a better phrase, you, you, you've actually done something good for, for, for yourself and, and for whom the, the, that, that need that the way that need lies for somebody, you know? Okay. No, for sure. Um, exploring and filling gaps. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, no, for sure. Um, sure, but um, 10 minutes past the hour, I'm going to open up the floor for a few question and answers um, to our audience. Um, we'll ask I, I'll, I'll have Kevin kind of answer them or try as best to answer as many as possible. We have about yep. 10 minutes for that. So if the audience want to send in your questions so we can have a little chit chat um, with Kevin some more. I guess maybe I answered all the questions already. <laughs> but, awesome. yeah. but in in the meantime, I'd say it has been a wonderful experience uh, mentoring with uh, Minds of Jamaica and Trinidad because uh, there's so much talent throughout the Caribbean, so many amazing young people who I've met um, over the past year and few months that I've been uh, volunteering here and always happy to give back and uh, support the youngsters because sometimes they need that guidance that is not readily available to them. Okay. Yeah. And
Our first question okay. is from uh, Premier. Um, what CAPE subjects uh, should one be taking to go into this? I am not familiar with CAPE, but I, I would say the, the general science subjects. And uh, I remember um, there was a technical, there was a technical uh, pre-engineering kind of uh, certification that is done in England. I can't remember what, what the name of it is. But uh, any kind of pre-engineering, you know, you we had a pre-engineering program um, through XED, and I'm not sure if UTEC still does it, but uh, for high schoolers, there's a pre-engineering program that they can do. But gen definitely the, 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 the science subjects, um, specifically physics as well, you know. Um, yeah, see, on my bridge in there, Dr. Dr. Williams just chime in. So, Kamar, somebody else was asking another question. Uh, What's yep. our most and common this conversation? Oh, there's, okay. there's one above yeah. that. For networking in the biomedical field for someone that just left university, doesn't have a lot of work experience or know a lot of people. What tips do Huh. So, there are a lot of, not sure where you're located, Abayo, but, um, even in Jamaica, there there are conferences. Um, go to some of those, those conferences. Um, the 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 uh, Jamaica Bureau of Ops. I really don't have a good grasp on 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 some of the things that happen in Jamaica where bio where the biomedical field is concerned. But uh, all the major companies you can think of, like the Roche. I had a cousin who works for Roche, and uh, they do have a presence in the Caribbean. Uh, maybe through some third party um, entity, but you'd seek those out. Any kind of science conference you can think about or any, uh, anything of that sort. You know, UE sometimes have those conferences, UTEC does. Uh, get involved in those so you can network and meet people. Okay. Oh, the most common misconception, come here, is that people sometimes think that and my kids do think that I'm a scientist. Um, I am not a scientist. <laughs> I know in, I know maybe what they're, what they what experiment they're running, um, what the results should look like and how to, how to help them solve some of the problems. And to a certain extent, my, my goal is, is to, is to make sure that particular instrument is working as intended, that when they get audited, all the ducks align, all right? And uh, there are no issues with the FDA or any other other regulatory bodies that exist. So I'm not a scientist. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, have you done yeah. e um, I'm not, not familiar what EDPM is. Jess. Okay. Um, while we wait on Jess to kind of expand on e the EDPM acronym, uh, one thing I want to ask you about mentorship would be, oh gosh, my brain is not functioning right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, oh, touching on DWILL 998's uh, comment about mentorship being a critical element of for any level of success. Has is, or how has mentorship helped you in your success um, today? So, uh, first of all, there's you you as you go through life, um, you, you you're gonna have a few mentors. Sometimes two at a time, sometimes three, depending on what your goal is. Uh, currently, I have uh, maybe three, <laughs> right? Um, because for different reasons. So, so in my profession, I have two in my organization, which kind of help to um, steer me or in a in a certain or give recommendations as to certain um, professional certifications that I might need, depending on where I want to go in my career. Um, so, so yeah, mentoring. Sorry, I I, I know the question is about me. Um, mentoring for me but i i don't remember the gist of the question sorry sorry it was more um how was it like that critical oh has, has critical for your success yeah yeah yes. yeah it has it has been critical because even being in this role for the uh 
for the first few months, um, I I had a senior manager who was 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 kind of my initial mentor and uh, giving me guidance because, as I explained earlier, it's a lot that I do on on a, on a daily basis, and uh, the 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 time management piece was 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 key and uh, prioritizing making time management is one thing but prioritizing because one major thing might happen you might have a major escalation and you might have to pivot in that moment and say well i'm not gonna do this 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 and uh, you know sometimes it affects something else but this big thing here needs to be addressed now and uh that mentor kind of helped me to to settle down and look, and step back and look at the bigger picture now you're not thinking about your day-to-day but and i think i mentioned it earlier you're thinking about um the district or this particular state and how it's gonna a uh, ripple effect is gonna have moving up and and down <laughs> you know yeah okay no for sure um so we've talked about mentors and um oh. we kind of do it um also personally i feel like you can learn from everybody have you like is there anything that you've taken from a mentee that kind of like have you opened up your eyes like huh that's new something to take on kind of thing yeah i was just gonna say the learning can go both ways um the learning can go both ways and there was a young lady who i mentored i think she was my first mentee and boy I, there there were so many so many instances that i was in awe because uh, she taught me a lot about just technology and space because we're kind of geek in in that in that way but um in terms of the telescopes that I uh, should be using and all that. So I, I learned a lot from that young lady. Um, sometimes I was like, let's get back on track with the, you know, creating your personal brand uh, thing. So yeah, uh, m- many, many of those, but none, none that comes to mind except the, the, the terrestrial stuff that we were talking about <laughs> occasionally. Um, Jess asks about electronic documentation preparation. Absolutely, yes uh document preparation in terms of maybe generating um uh sops and such likes as uh and a regular field service engineer really doesn't do much of that you must have the basic your basic know how to read a schematic diagram and uh sometimes you're taking guidance from a manual or something like that but uh the electronic document preparation is really a good a good um skill to have especially when you are writing certain documents um yeah it's hands down it's it's, it's a good thing you know you're writing a report based on um say a quality issue that you find say it's an escalation um just just good skill to have i'd say okay nope for sure um document prep sometimes it can be a bane of your existence as you grow up, as you kind of get there in your career and you kind of try to delegate because you feel like you don't want to do it but to be honest it's, it's a skill that you need to have um i guess over time yeah. and not from me anymore but um definitely something uh because i tell you supervisor do watch they, they 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 actually watch how you prepare documents um something as simple as minutes as well um so that's mm. something to come forward to um i think rochelle simona said is asking an advice any advice for students who want to enter that field in jamaica seeing that the field is a non-traditional one and the path may not be as straightforward as other mm. uh that's uh that's a great that's a good one um rochelle sorry i don't have a like I said earlier, I don't have a good grasp on what the landscape looks like in Jamaica, but fundamentally, any engineer or even science goes, we do have people who have science degrees that work for us. Um, having that technical aptitude and uh, fundamentally just being able to troubleshoot, solve problems at, uh, at a very complex level, because no longer are people, unless you're in manufacturing, 
your and sometimes occasionally somebody will do that but no longer are we we troubleshooting down to uh, a circuit level unless you're 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 doing some kind of um oh man what's the term is term is escaping me right now but you're looking for what what caused a particular problem that is is just um that, that amongst a cross section of instrument types because as a field service engineer you're not working on just at least in my company on one instrument you're working on like 14 different types of instruments from basic pcr all the way up to a sequencer to flow cytometers and all of, yeah so i would say just basic electronic skills would definitely help you and sometimes there's a confusion between electrical engineering and electronic engineering so the bigger voltage is 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 electrical electronic is is more small device kind of thing okay yeah. i like something today electronic and electrical yeah. electronic yeah. All devices. So does that mean like the watches that you tinkered with <laughs> would be a part Definitely of electronic. electronic? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So learning something. All right. Um, we have about nine minutes remaining mm -hmm. before I live. Um, judging on my agenda and how we kind of structured this, we're on, we're on time. Um, something that is pretty good. Something that you learn also in your career, whether it's engineering or anything, is that time, like being punctual and also just yeah. respecting people's time is huge and something that we kind of think. So it um, uh, goes, goes a long way. All right. Uh, so I think I mentioned earlier as part of our mentorship Mondays that we kind of, um, we usually have a giveaway um and the prize chromebook from the minds of jamaica um just to just so we're all clear of what um the uh, requirements are is that you have to be a student and you have to be located in jamaica uh to to win this one okay so uh kevin has been an engineer for a few years um, wasn't his first choice. Um, it's a two part question kind of. Um, so one, what was initial, what was it, what was his initial first career and what career move did he make and into what industry that he's in today? So again, what was his first career? uh that he started out in and what was what was the industry that he kind of moved to that he's working in today if you, if you can uh, give me that the answer to that question um first correct answer will have a chance of winning that chromebook and remember you need to be a student in jamaica Doesn't count, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> okay. Okay. We gave it about a minute. You have to be specific about what engineering it is. If we're looking at, at a chance of winning, can't go say engineer. That's very broad. There are lots of fields um, for engineering. So be very specific.
It is 625. So it looks like we have some really good responses, but I'm seeing only one that's correct. Okay. Who is that one, Kevin? Ellie looks like she got it. Or he, whom, um, the individual has it Hel right. Ellie Cap. Ellie dot case. Okay. All right. So. All right. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yep. On the so I'd say. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Ellie case. Yep. Okay, underscore so dot case. Um, if you could just uh, send us a DM with your name, number, and location, uh, we'll be reaching out to get that over to you. So while I'm I'm in the biotechnology space, I'm a field engineer in that industry. So, so Ellie um, was was paying attention, so you get a tiki. <laughs> I was gonna say back in the day. Okay. So, yeah. All right, okay. Um, so to wrap up, um, congratulations, Heli. I hope you're pronouncing that, I'm pronouncing that correctly, on uh, winning the Chromebook. We'll be reaching out to you shortly once you DM us with the information that you need. Um, so again, uh, Kevin, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us. Thank you. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I learned a lot today. Um, I still, I, I, I didn't want to ask a question, but I kind of want to know what PCR means because I personally like Pol the acronym PCR. Polymer chase chain reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Very, it's not, very it, yeah, you take the double helix. Uh, come here, we, we'll be able to explain to you better than I am, but you take the double helix, slice it in two, and pretty much stretch it, magnify it, so, and quantify it so you can work with it a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I feel, I, I feel, I'm happy with my job. I, I, I am feel fulfilled because I feel like I'm contributing to the greater good of society in any any lab any type of lab you have instruments that you work on like i said earlier forensics even with transplants um after someone gets a transplant because the you can use the a person's you, you can use their gene sequencing to see if the body is re rejecting that, that 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 particular organ and be ahead of it uh, before so a lot of targeted therapy and diagnostic happens with, with, with some of these instruments and, you know. Okay, okay. Nope. sounds pretty good. Um, so I learned a lot. I think everybody um, <laughs> come back like Yeah, so come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah follow it. Yeah. yeah, so this is the first of many sessions. Um, I believe we'll be doing it monthly. So look out for our next, um, next uh, who'll be our next host as well as who will be your next um is, is, is it interviewee interviewee next. yes yes next <laughs> our, our also, mentor yes our yeah. mentor so definitely look yeah. out for that uh before we wrap up again just want to remind um everybody minds off the or initiative is really just to um empowering the next generation of uh professionals from the caribbean and under underrepresented um communities again this uh, session was sponsored by Schwarzman Scholars. Schwarzman Scholar, it, Scholars is a one-year fully funded master's degree program based in Beijing, China, and accepts students from all over the world every year. Applicants from Jamaica are fully eligible to apply. Please um, go look it up if you're interested about doing your master's, um, schwarzmanscholars.org, as well as reach out and check out or... Um, the Minds Off website. I, I think I see Cameron put that in the chat. Um, the yeah. Minds Off uh, dot com. 
So um, thank you everybody for your time. And, oh, sorry, before we close. And one last thing, spread the word to, to, to folks who um, in Jamaica are in Trinidad um, who, who want to, a mentor, you know, usually it's what, first year students or students in college period. So spread the word, you know, we're, we're giving back and we want to help these young, young people. Okay. Yeah. Well said, Kevin. Well said. All right. So thank you everybody for sticking thank you. around. With our, it was an amazing time chatting with Kevin and um, have a great evening and we'll right. next one. Thank, thank you, Alicia. Right. Thanks everyone. <laughs>